All right guys, and welcome back to the tech channel. This is our channel where we're gonna tell you informational stuff, unboxings, reviews, stuff like that. And today I'm gonna teach you guys how to program a Betaflight Quad. And this is a question I get quite frequently. So I figured why not make a video, show you guys how to do it. And I'll actually be doing this on the Flight Test Blur, which you guys will be checking out shortly. It'll be available on our store. And I'm gonna update it to the latest thing. Let's go inside, get on a computer, get some Betaflight fired up, and I'll show you how to set up your quad. All right, now that we're inside, we got all our things. We got a computer, our quad, a battery, probably a prop tool, because we're gonna have to take our props off. We're gonna go ahead and download Betaflight and get that up and running. So if you guys don't know what Betaflight is, it's actually the software that you're gonna do everything on the drone with. So programming motors, programming lights, uh, changing ESC firmwares, all the nitty gritty stuff, Betaflight's gonna be where it's at. So you're gonna go ahead and type in Google is what I usually do is Betaflight Configurator. And it's gonna come up with a couple different options. You're gonna go ahead and skip the Chrome one. Uh, that really doesn't work too much anymore. You're gonna want the standalone version. Uh, so we're gonna look for GitHub, which is the next one right here. And you can see I have already clicked on it. So we're gonna click on that one. The latest one out is Betaflight Configurator 10.6. And I'll make sure to put a link to this website right here so you guys can go straight to it and download the configurator. And you're just gonna go here to Betaflight Configurator 10.6. And you're gonna go down here and download the version you need. So for me personally, I run Windows and a PC, so I'm gonna download Win32. All right, so now once you have Betaflight installed on your computer, you're gonna go ahead and open it up. And before we connect our quad to our computer, I always take my propellers off, so I'm gonna do that right now. Now we have our propellers off and it's completely safe to plug into the computer. We're gonna go ahead and plug the flight controller in and see what kind of flight controller this is first before we do anything. So I'm gonna take our USB cable and plug it into our flight controller and then we're gonna connect to our computer. Now, if your computer does not recognize your flight controller, you may have to install drivers and if you look right here on the welcome page, Right down here where it says latest drivers, latest STM, USB, or latest Zaddig, you're gonna wanna download the driver and follow those instructions right there. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and connect. And once I'm connected, I'm gonna go down here to CLI. These are gonna be command lines that you can type in and get different information from your drone. And I'm definitely no computer programmer or know anything about code, but once you start learning the shortcuts and how to look stuff up here in CLI, it becomes really second nature. So right now, all I'm gonna do is type in version. That way we can pull up what version flight controller this is. And it looks right here, it's a Betaflight flight controller and it's Omnibus F4 and it's on 3.5.7. So I'm actually gonna be updating this to the latest and greatest. So now that I know all this information, I'll either write it down or I'll memorize it. I'll go ahead and put this into DFU mode. And there's a couple of ways you can put your drone into DFU mode. You could do it the old school way where you solder two pads together and bridge it and that makes a connection. Or some flight controllers have a button on it while you plug it in, it goes into DFU mode. But I like to work smarter, not harder. So the easiest way possible for me is to go ahead and use the CLI command. And there's two commands that you can put in here and it all depends on what firmware you're on. And right now we're on 3.5, so we're gonna use BL as bootloader and that's gonna put us in to DFU mode. But if you were before 3.2 firmware, you're gonna use DFU, which is just gonna put you straight into the DFU mode. So I'm gonna go back to BL and we're gonna hit enter. And hopefully this works with me and it'll go straight into DFU mode. Now, if you're having trouble going into DFU mode and Betaflight's giving you a hard time, you can also go to Impulse RC and download their driver fixer. This is gonna be helpful for when your drone doesn't wanna go into DFU. You can run this program and it will force it and fix the DFU drivers on your board and allow you to go into DFU mode on Betaflight. So it's a really helpful tool and I'll make sure to leave the link below. But now since we're in DFU mode, I'm gonna actually go to our firmware flasher on the left and that's how we're gonna download and install our newest and latest and greatest firmware. So we'll actually click on Firmware Flasher and you'll see 
The first drop down menu says choose a board. So that's why it's really important to figure out what version board and firmware you're on before you even get to this stage. So we know ours is an Omnibus F4. So I'm gonna click on choose a board and I'm gonna go down and find our Omnibus. It's gonna be in alphabetical order. So we're gonna go down to the O's and we're gonna click on Omnibus F4. Now, as you notice here, there's a couple different Omnibus options. You want to make sure you pick the exact version, which R said was the Omnibus F4. It had no other letters or anything else attached to it. So I'm going to click that one. Now it's going to tell us to choose a firmware or a version. And I'm going to click on the latest, which is 4.1.1. Now, if you had this little slider up here clicked show unstable releases, you would be getting release candidates in the menu as well. I make sure to have that off because I want something that's stable and I know that it's gonna work. And I don't really like dealing with bugs or any kind of fixes that I'm gonna have to do later down the road. So I'm just gonna use the stable versions. So now we're gonna load that firmware online and it's gonna pop up the release info and it's gonna tell you a little bit about the firmware you're about to download. And then we're gonna go ahead and flash firmware. So first you're gonna notice it's erasing the board. It's going to erase the previous firmware that was on there and then it's going to go into flashing. And once this bar is filled up, then your flash is complete. Now that it's programmed, we can go ahead and I like to reset it. So I'll unplug it from the computer and then I'll go ahead and plug back in, connect our board. And the first menu we go to is our setup menu. And in the setup menu, I always like to make sure that I mounted our flight controller correctly. So I'll pick up my quad and actually move it around. And I wanna make sure that the virtual quad on the computer mimics what I'm doing in real life. So if I move the quad forward, the virtual quad goes forward, backwards, right, left, and I do yaw. Everything looks good there. So the next step while we're in setup, we'll calibrate our accelerometer. So what you'll do is make sure your quad is completely flat and then you'll hit calibrate accelerometer. All right, now we're gonna go into our ports tab and turn on UR3. And that's because I soldered my signal wire to the RX3 pad. So when you solder your signal wire from your receiver to an RX pad, that RX pad number is gonna be associated with the UR. Since I turned that port on, now we can go ahead and move on to our configuration tab. So on the left here, you'll see the mixer and that's gonna be your motor direction. And also, if you run a tricopter, a hex, an octo, a flying wing, whatever you're running, you're gonna select that there. So say if we were running a octocopter, it would have eight motors that pop up, but we are actually gonna run a quad X. Now, right here, the motor direction is reversed. I usually run reversed motor direction, and the only reason I do that is to make sure when I cut grass or anything like that with my front propellers, it pushes the debris away from my camera instead of at my camera. So I'm gonna actually click this and switch it to reverse. Now, if you're running normal prop direction, that's completely fine. All that means is motors one and four are gonna spin clockwise, and motors two and three are gonna spin counterclockwise. Now we're gonna go over to our ESC motor features on the right, and the first thing you see is ESC motor protocol, and for some reason this one flashes at brushed, and we're definitely not running brush motors. We're running a bigger five inch quad, and it has a BL Heli S ESC in it, and I know it runs D-Shot 600, so I'm gonna click D-Shot 600. Most ESCs out there nowadays, either if it's a BL Heli S or a BL Heli 32, nine times out of 10 are gonna run D-Shot 600, but it's always smart to go ahead and check your guys' owner manuals or any information that you know about the quad that you have. Now by default, motor stop is off, that's good. We don't want that on. And then the motor idle is 5.5, so that's how fast when you hit arm how fast that the motors are gonna spin at idle. Now we're gonna move down a little bit and on the left here, you're gonna see gyro update frequency and PID loop frequency. That's the next thing I usually touch. And I'll make my PID loop frequency 8K along with the gyro. And the reason that is, it just thinks faster, it's quicker. And this all depends if your board can handle it or not. Depending on what options you have turned on and what options you turn, have turned off is gonna determine your amount of CPU load, which if you look here on beta flight at the bottom, you'll see CPU load right now is 8%. And if we turn this up to 8K, 8K, and after we hit save and reboot, our CPU load has now gone up to 14% and peaking around 15%. So every little change you make in beta flight 
is gonna change that CPU load. And the rule of thumb that I've always stuck by is nothing over 30% CPU load. So the next thing we're gonna look at is our accelerometer. And you're gonna either leave this on or turn it off depending on how you fly and your skill level. So if you're still flying in horizon mode or angle mode, or if you have a tiny whoop that just flies better in angle mode, you're gonna leave the accelerometer on because that's what's gonna determine if your aircraft is level to the horizon. Now, if you're flying in nothing but acro, like somebody like I do on my race drones at least, is I'm just gonna turn the accelerometer off. That's one thing less that the quad's gonna have to think about, uh, and it's gonna make my quad fly a little bit better in my opinion. But like I said, if you're using horizon or angle mode, definitely leave the accelerometer option on. And the next two I'm gonna turn off because the, they don't even have the sensors on this flight controller. If you look over on the right, the board and sensor alignment and the accelerometer trim, I usually don't touch those unless the flight controller is mounted in an orientation it's not supposed to be. So if you look at most flight controllers, they have an arrow that'll show you how the board should be mounted. Sometimes it's easier to mount the board sideways, upside down, so on and so forth. So you'll actually change the board orientation in the computer right here on the roll degrees, pitch degrees, and yaw degrees. So next we're gonna go down here to receiver mode and that's gonna be where you choose if you're running PPM, PWM, or nowadays most newer receivers are serial based receivers. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a serial based receiver. Now this is gonna work for your transmitter protocols such as Spectrum, FR Sky, Futaba. They're gonna run on the serial based receiver. And next down here, we're gonna go to serial receiver provider. And since I run Spectrum, I'm gonna pick Spectrum 2048. But if you run other transmitters, you can go ahead and pick their protocol as well in this menu, such as FR Sky runs on SBUS, or if you run the Crossfire, it runs on CRSF. So we're gonna scroll down and now we're gonna talk about other features. Right here in your other features section, there are a couple that I always turn on. And depending on what kind of drone you're building, you might wanna turn on some and turn off others. So right now, the ones that I always turn on are air mode, OSD, anti-gravity, and dynamic filtering. So as you can see with the newer firmware, all four of those are already turned on. And then if you keep scrolling, you can also see other things like D-Shot Beacon or Beeper configuration. So if you have a Beeper, this is where you're gonna mess with all those settings. So that's it for configuration. I'm gonna save and reboot. Now we're gonna go to power and battery. In this setting, I really don't mess with much. The only thing I change since I high volt all my batteries is I'll go in here and change my maximum cell voltage to something like 4.5. Next, we're gonna go to our PID tuning page. Now this page on Betaflight is gonna be the page you're gonna be mostly working in when you're gonna be tuning your quad, adjusting rates, making the feel of the quadcopter itself feel better. This is gonna be the page where you're gonna do it. I'll make sure to link more videos of different people that go in depth on PID tuning. The only thing inside this tab that I usually change right from the start would be rates, if you know your rates. If you don't know your rates, just leave them stock and then you can go back in and mess with them later. So for this instance, I'm just gonna leave them stock. Next, we're gonna go down to receiver. And the only thing in the receiver page that you're actually gonna touch is your channel map. So depending on how you set up your model in your transmitter is gonna be dependent on how you set up your channel map. And since I won't run spectrum, I'm gonna click the spectrum option and it's gonna make sure that it's on the TAER1234 channel map. Now, if you run FR Sky or Futaba, if you click that option, it's gonna change it to the AETR1234 channel map. Now, depending on how you set up your FR Sky model, you may want to use the TAER channel mapping. So I'm gonna just set this back to Spectrum. I'm gonna hit save in this menu. And before I move on to the next menu, I'm just gonna go ahead and move my sticks real quick and make sure my receiver is functioning properly. So the next menu we're gonna go to is your modes tab. Now in your modes tab, there's a couple different options you can set up, anything from arm to turtle to horizon angle mode. And there's only a few that I set up personally. I definitely set up an arm switch. I set up my turtle mode switch, and that's usually it for a race drone. But if I'm setting up a tiny whoop or another drone for somebody else, I also turn on horizon and angle mode as well. Now, if they're in auto mode, 
you can go ahead and flip the switch that you want to use and Betaflight will actually detect what switch you're flipping. For example, arm mode, if I flip my arm mode switch now, it'll actually detect on Betaflight and you'll see it switch to aux one and you'll see the little tick mark go back and forth. And you wanna move that slider bar to the position where you wanna arm. So if I flip my switch to the arm position and the tick mark stays here, I'm gonna wanna move my slider to that position. And I could do the exact same for turtle mode as well. So now I have my two mode switches set up and I'm gonna hit save and we're going to move to our motors tab. This is the part you wanna make sure absolutely 100% that your propellers are off. We're actually gonna supply voltage to the quad and since it's plugged into the computer, sometimes the computer can make the quad have a mind of its own. So I'm gonna click this check mark right here saying I understand the risks and that I have taken off all the propellers. And after I do that, I can go ahead and plug in my quadcopter. Now I'm gonna take this main slider right here and move it up so I can spin on my motors. And I'm gonna feel my motors with my fingers to see which way that the motors are spinning. All right, looks like all my motors are spinning correctly. Now, if your motors weren't spinning correctly, there's two ways you can go ahead and spin the direction of the motor. The first way and the easiest way is to go ahead and download BL Heli Configurator. And I'll make sure to leave a link below to this configurator. And that's where you're gonna actually go into the ESC and you can change reverse or normal direction on your motor. Now, I highly suggest you go ahead and download that configurator anyways, cause that's how you're gonna update your ESC and get it on the latest firmware. Now, if you don't wanna do it that way, there's also the old technique where you could just go ahead and swap two wires on that ESC. So manually go ahead and unsolder one and solder it to the other pad and that should change your motor direction. Either way, it's gonna work fine. So go ahead and do that now if your motors aren't spinning correctly and then we'll go ahead and jump to the next menu. Next is gonna be your OSD menu and this isn't gonna be on every single quad. It's only gonna be if your flight controller has an OSD function built into it or you have some kind of external OSD that's installed on your quad. So if you have one of those, you can go in here and set up all your OSD functions. And real quick, I'm gonna show you the way that I do it and set up my OSD for racing. I make it super simple and only put a couple of things up on my OSD. So I'm gonna set that up now and walk you through that. But feel free to experiment around in this tab a little bit to see what you like up on your display. So first what I do is I like to turn off this logo, get rid of the beta flight. And then since I live in America and most of our stuff is in NTSC, I'm gonna go ahead and click that and that's gonna actually take my screen down to the size that I'm gonna see through the goggles. Now I also go ahead and turn off my warnings. Then I'll go ahead and turn on main battery voltage and I'll either put that in some corner in the bottom or in top. For now, we'll put it in the left bottom corner. And then I go ahead and use timer too which timer two is gonna go ahead and detect your fly time. So your fly minutes, if you use timer one, that's gonna be, as soon as you plug in, it's gonna start the clock. I wanna know as soon as I take off flying, arm my switch and take off flying, that's how much time I've been flying for. So I put those there and I usually do my craft name as well. All right guys, and that's how you set up your Betaflight quad. And this was definitely a quick version and just a simple way to get your quad up in the air flying. There's definitely more advanced ways to go about Betaflight and there's a lot more capabilities that Betaflight can do. And if you guys have a tip or trick about Betaflight that you want me to do a video on, make sure to leave it in the comments below. And if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure to do so and I'll catch you on the next one.